A very warm welcome to you and thank you for joining me on this episode of Quality Time with Owen Francis. And today, we're going to be discussing quality at Tenderface. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up if you like it, and please share a comment at the end of the video if it was a value to you. Thank you so much. Today, we are going to be discussing quality at Tenderface. And this is for a business or for a business owner or anybody who's responsible for making sure that quality management is implemented in any business that provides welding as a primary means of service. Off the bat, number one, we are going to be talking about legislation. What sort of legislation is applicable for a business that providing welding services at Tenderface for us to comply with? Now, in our Occupational Health and Safety Act, we would take note that we have pressure equipment regulations reference and later on I'll be discussing exactly what the pressure equipment regulations are that we need to comply with. But for this video, we're going to make mention of it and we're also going to say that directly linked to your pressure equipment regulations is your standard SANS 347. This is something that we've got to be aware of as a business in terms of compliance if we'd like to be successful for any project at tender phase. The second thing is customer requirements. What is the customer requirements? Some of the most important things to consider with customer requirements and those are obvious, but it's something that we've got to mention, a scope. What is your scope? What is our scope of work on the project? What are we tendering for? Are we tendering for fabrication, uh, brand new fabrication? Are we tendering for repair? Are we tendering for maintenance? Or are we tendering for design? This is important because for every single scope, for every single responsibility that we are required to provide a service for, we've got to be compliant with the standards. So we've got to know exactly what our scope is so that we can comply with the standards required by the client for the service required. The third thing that we need to understand clearly, especially at Tinder Face, is the drawings. One, do we have drawings for us to submit a, a quote? Are the drawings approved for construction? This is really important. Sometimes drawings are issued just at tender phase for us to price, which is okay. And we've got to consider that if we're pricing drawings at tender phase that are, are noted or stamped for information only for us tender phase, changes that are occur in the drawings before fabrication or before your, your, your approval construction drawing is issued, we've got to review those two drawings and make sure that the same because it will change our pricing. This happens many, many, many times. So we've got to be aware of that. I'm not going to get into contracts and stuff, but from a drawings perspective, we've got to be really fluent at reading and understanding our technical drawings, whether it be structural piping, vessels or tanks, we've got to understand the standards that go with it. Also, the requirements for each fabrication, whether it's repair, design, or it's a, a brand new uh, fabrication altogether, whether it's a modification. You gotta know exactly what the standard says. For example, if we're working on a tank, we'd be working with, um, most times in the petrol industry, we'd be working with a code like API 653. We need to know exactly what the code says for the repair so that we can comply because there's lots of cost sync involved. And this information we can all get from drawing. The next thing is a quality management system. And I know there's many businesses that are operating in the industry who probably, uh, the owner started a business 14, 15 years ago, and the individual is still involved in the business directly in every single aspect of the business. Probably got a wife assisting uh, with HR and admin work and that type of a thing, a family type of a business where uh, you're working in an industry where there wasn't a great demand for you to have a quality management system. And what would happen is, uh, for example, in the, in the sugar industry, you'd, you'd get probably uh, invited to a site meeting you attend a site meeting, you had a look at what the scope of work is, and then you submit your, 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 your quotation for the job, how much it's gonna cost you. There's not a whole lot of customer requirements. They just say, look, come have a look at the job, give us a price, and you, you do so, and you're successful, and you're awarded the, the contract, you're awarded the tender, whatever it is, and you're successful. You fabricate, uh, you install whatever it is, whether it's a pipeline, it's a vessel, whatever it is, and the client comes, the engineer comes, he has a look at the job, he sees, look, he's happy, thumbs up, signs your invoice, money in your bank, 30 days later, 60 days later, whatever the terms are with the client. But those days are gone. Those days are gone, guys. We've got to understand exactly what the customer requirements are. And a lot of customers are required that we have some sort of a management system in place for us to monitor the activities in our business. 
Now they are identified by ISO as quality management systems and, and yes that's what they are um, but they really are business management systems so companies or clients would like to know before they award you the tender do you have a system in place to monitor the operations of your business yes or no what are they there's two popular quality management systems that we use as ISO 9001 2015 which is can be adapted to any business more specifically recently um, ISO 3834 is a standard for welding. So if you're a business that's providing welding as a service, many clients are requesting that you have ISO 3834 in place for them to have the comfort that, look, this guy knows what's happening. And he, he has uh, a system that he can assist him manage traceability, resources, uh, technical queries, uh, and any sort of requirements that are expected by the client for you to operate at 100% efficiency. So quality management systems are really important. It's not just okay for us to um, come and have a look at the job, price it, uh, get awarded in store and get a visual inspection from an engineer at the end of the project saying it's okay. Now we've got to supply supporting documents to confirm that the fabrication from start to finish was in accordance with the customer requirements. Finally, documentation. We touched on it a very little. Um, documentation is important. You've got to have the proper documentation and not just the safety file. We know everybody's making safety files and that's amazing. But not just the safety file. We've got to have all the procedures in place, all the supporting documents in place for a business to function on a project or provide a service uh, uh, to a client from tender phase, technical review, right, up until handover commissioning and final handover and everything in the middle but these are very important not only because they will assist you to hand over a complete and compliant uh, fabrication to your client but also traceability you, you could look at every step of the of the project and see exactly where you're making progress where you where you having issues and identify little places where improvements needed and you can address it and Improve your business, improve your service to your clients, and ultimately look at targeting different markets and growing as a business. I hope this was valuable to you. Please give me a thumbs up if it was. Leave a comment in the, in the comment section below if it wasn't, and I really enjoyed having this time with you. I hope you did too. Hope to see you next time, another episode of Quality Time with Owen Francis. Thank you.